Um, hi. <laughs> Need something? Oh, no. Well, it's just... I'm a little new here, and everyone's got these big, flashy designs. And I'm supposed to come up with one too, but like, I don't know if it's as good or like, good at all, even. Thank you for saying that, but like, really? I don't know. <clears throat> Whatever. Here goes. So, I was thinking that we could really use a recreational craft in our fleet. But not like super luxurious like our Adonis pleasure yacht, something marketed more towards families. Something mom and dad could pack up and take the kids on vacation. <laughs> you probably think that's stupid, right? Hmm, I haven't thought of all the details, but I'd imagine lots of passenger space would be a top priority. A mid-sized ship with enough room for one, or maybe even two or three families to spread out and relax. I don't think you'd need any fancy weapons or scientific equipment, so it should be pretty affordable. Families don't want to spend a fortune, so keeping the cost low will help guarantee plenty of sales. I used to go off-world camping with my family when I was a kid. The other families we met always complained their ships weren't quite adequate for family vacations. They never had enough room, and the kids would always fight. I've done some market research, and like, no ship manufacturer seems to be making ships for things like this. Which means even if the demand is low, we can fill this niche and still sell a lot. Well, you listened to my idea more than the others did, so I'll take it as a good sign. Thanks! So far I do, but um, <clears throat> just between you and me, I feel like I'm in a little over my head. I, I feel like I have no idea what I'm doing, but my bosses really seem to like my work, so I don't know. I mean, I guess I'm doing something right. <sighs> I still feel weird pitching ideas to people who have been at this for so much longer than I have. It's... interesting. <laughs> I'm new, and I've never done anything like this before coming here. M marketing for ships, specifically, that is. There are so many things to think of for different demographics, like style, features, cost, and all that. And you also need to think about offensive and defensive capabilities, because space is dangerous and people need to feel like the ship they're buying is safe. Yeah, I've only been here for a few months. I did a little marketing for chunks before this, but it was really more of an internship. <laughs> Ships are like totally different than that. I applied for the job here on a whim because I thought it'd be fun. I never expected to be hired. You know, I have designed spacecraft for over 10 years. So, you must have really impressed Walter for him to give you this project. Or maybe it's a bit of nepotism. Never mind that. <laughs> Perhaps he sees in you what he sees in me. My hope is that he sees the passion in our work. In truth, I know he values me. But he has yet to truly cut me loose from the corporate reins and let me do as I wish. But I understand Walter has given you much greater control of our project. Perhaps I can learn from you and convince him I'm ready for the same. As a designer, I see the beauty in our craft and deliver that to the consumer. My desire is to make flying in our ships a joy to all the senses. I have won awards. I am proud of my work, but I do not like to brag. Rather, my goal is to change the board's perception of employees like myself from mere cogs in the corporate machine to value us as artists and let us do as we please. Ah, yes. At least you may be more open to my ideas than my colleagues. Maybe this is a blessing in disguise. Imagine a luxury craft designed for the most discerning of tastes. Every feature designed for comfort and peace of mind. 
high-end performance, precision engineering, a spacecraft for those who wish to be seen. This will be the most elite personal craft on the market. The ship should be mid-size, spacious but not bulky. We'll want to build it with the highest quality, most expensive modules available. It should feel safe, but not threatening. Focus on defensive measures, not aggressive weaponry. Above all, you should be able to picture your favorite celebrity, or Walter himself, flying this ship and influencing others to buy as well. Hmm... I think I understand what you mean. It is not enough to say it's a high-end luxury ship. Who is flying this ship? Where do they go? What is their story? And why do they crave such attention? Oh, thank you. I will think on this and improve on my proposal. Because I am the lead designer on the project, it is literally my job to design it. It is frustrating because I keep getting pushback, and Jules has this idea that we will make a better product by designing it all together. Since everyone has equal say, it led us to a standstill. It was much easier before. Just because I do not like how corporate we have become doesn't mean I don't like getting paid. Besides, with every successful ship I design, I believe I can influence the company to shift away from typical corporate bullshit and back to taking risks by pursuing art and innovation. Then again, here we are. Two words. Conspicuous consumption. Are you familiar with this concept? Huh. Of course. Rich celebrity like Borealis buys shiny ship to show off. Idiot consumer sees Borealis use our ship, and idiot consumer wants one too. I hope that's simple enough for you. Two words. Conspicuous consumption. Are you familiar with this concept? Of course you do. I'm glad you understand. Imagine someone like Borealis stepping out of one of our shining luxury ships. Everyone would want to look that cool. Not only would I have the chance to work on a dream ship, but that kind of exposure is guaranteed to sell it. So, you're Walter's friend. I know he chose you to head this project as some sort of... favor? Honestly, as senior technical designer, I was hoping to receive that honor, but, um... <laughs> uh, there's always next time. Regardless, I'm excited to help you out. Do you have any experience building spaceships? This is wonderful to hear. I hope for all of our sakes that you are not overselling your ability. Now, I know you've been asked to give feedback on our design proposals. Would you care for a brief synopsis of mine? I'm the most senior designer on this project, for one. Despite all the acclaim he gets, I actually referred Frank to his current design position. He and I were in the same design program when we went to get our degrees back in uni. We support each other as friends as much as possible. Even when we disagree, I love my job here. But I dream one day of working for a small startup or running my own design firm so I can work on custom ships instead of mass-produced products. Of course. But first, let me ask you this. What pilot demographic is currently being underserved by the current starship market? Well, you're not fun. My idea is a little less... conventional. I believe we should invest in making a dedicated exploration ship, marketed towards citizen scientists. Sure, we and other manufacturers have lines of exploration ships, but... None built with the average consumer in mind. It's my hope that we can jumpstart a new era of affordable, accessible space exploration fueled by ordinary people like you and me. I'd start with a small ship profile. It won't need much storage or passenger capacity. Then, of course, you would want an advanced grav drive to reach deep space and plenty of energy for extended flights. 
In order to keep costs down, it likely doesn't need expensive weapon systems or defensive measures. It won't need those where it's going. And of course, high-end scanners and other scientific equipment is a must. Yeah, that's what Jules said too. But at least that gives me something to think about. Thanks. I'll refine the idea and propose it next time, I guess. Why do I feel like answering this could be a trap coming from someone who was sent here by Walter to step in and take over our project? <sighs> it's not like I have anything to hide. I used to think working for a super wealthy corporation would be terrible, but honestly, it's pretty great. They've been good to me, and the stability is way better than any startup. I've had opportunities I wouldn't have anywhere else, so yeah, pretty great. Well, as a senior designer, I'm trusted to work on some pretty important features on these ships. Most of my work is on the technical features, designing them to be more user-friendly. Computer systems like navigation, targeting, you name it. It may not be as glamorous as what Frank does, but without me, these ships would be almost impossible for the average consumer to actually use. We've got people poring over the data you collected as we speak. Oh, yes, I actually do have a proposal. I wasn't really expecting you to give me feedback, but why not, I guess? I'd like to see us branch out a bit more in the Starfighter market. Bounty hunting and mercenary work are both big these days, especially among the hard-blooded Freestars. I'm glad you brought that up. No, and yes, there's a lot of work out there that requires a capable fighting ship. But the real success comes from UC military contracts, which we would hope to attract by building a higher-end version of this ship platform for them. We'd want to give it strong weapons, tough defenses, plus good speed and maneuverability. Most Starfighters are fairly small, and the tricky part is keeping costs down with all those fancy modules. You could be right. There's got to be a better way to pitch the idea. I'll give it some more thought. Thanks. What can't your ship do, Jules? Does it do taxes? Play the accordion? Maybe I shouldn't give you ideas. So you managed to complete a couple different missions. This will give us lots of data to support building a ship that can tackle a variety of scenarios. Of course, if we build a ship like that, we may need the kitchen sink budget, but we'll see. Thanks for your help. Now, we just need to solve our interpersonal issues so we can agree on a design. Easy, right? <laughs> because I'd be lying if I told you it wasn't, and as long as I'm being honest, it's kind of my fault. I had this idea that we should all collaborate on the design because I thought it'd give us the best results, and I'm not willing to give up on that idea. But it's made this challenging because it made everyone equally invested and no one wants to give up anything. You seem awfully confident for someone who doesn't know how long we've been dealing with this. I've tried everything I can think of besides some sort of hokey team building exercise. So, what do you think you can do differently? Okay, for real, it's mostly been just a bunch of arguing. First we tried a group brainstorming session, and that went about as well as you can imagine. We tried individual designs, but that backfired. We've had meetings focused on individual aspects of the ship, and that just prolonged the process. I could have put my foot down and made a decision, but then I'd be giving up on my idea that collaboration will build us the best ship. That, and I don't want anyone to resign because of me. Hmm. I can't believe I didn't think of that. It's fair. Everyone goes around the table and makes a cut. That way no one feels like they're the only one being asked to compromise. This should drive us towards a more focused design. And since Walter asked you to take the lead on this, I don't have to be the villain here. So you're sure about this? Great! Let's get ready to disappoint everyone equally! I know you're joking, and you're not completely wrong. But our employer said we need to listen to your friend here, so that's what we're doing. <sighs> well, here goes nothing. Okay, everyone. Our friend here, remember, not me, has decided in order to move forward, 
We're going to go around the table and everyone is going to give up one major aspect of your design. It's the fairest way to do this, and ultimately, I think it's going to make our collective design choices a lot easier. Who wants to start? <coughs> okay, fine. I'll go first. I'm willing to cut some of the included hard points. It'll mean less firepower, but the consumer can still add them afterwards, I suppose. Uh, you're looking at me, huh? I guess that means you want me to go. Look, I'll be easy. You know I wasn't looking for anything fancy, but if I've got to make cuts, uh, we can reduce some of the cargo base. Uh, I guess we can cut some of the extra sensors and data collection equipment? As long as this thing can still make it to deep space and back with no problem, I'll be happy. Um, I'd be willing to give up some of the passenger space, maybe. Yeah, that should be okay. Frank? Mm, okay, fine, you win. I'll cut out some of the luxury designs and features. All that gold trim was going to be tacky anyway. Well then, that wasn't so bad. I feel much more confident we can actually build this thing. This is going great. Just fantastic. Based on the decisions you made, well, I'm not quite sure what kind of ship we're going to end up with, but it should be capable in a variety of situations. It sure will have a lot of... stuff to it. I hope not, but it's possible. If the ship sells well enough, the board will have no problem increasing the budget next time. The data you gathered for us will last a while too. And I think I picked up some useful techniques from you to help us work together better. This ship's going to be big and it's going to have the best components available. I'm sure it'll be very capable of handling any situation thrown at it. This thing is going to be a beast, and I don't know how we're going to make it look halfway presentable. My only other concern comes down to the sticker price and how we're going to actually sell such a monstrosity, but that's marketing's problem now. Poor Nev. Now that we've addressed all our issues, we can move forward, finalize the design, and get this into production pretty quickly. If you could do us a favor and let Walter know that we're back on track, I'm sure he'll be thrilled. Thanks for your help. I did enjoy watching your escapades around Neon with Walter. <laughs> I'm sure it's all he'll talk about next time. Oh, has he now? My dear young man, what have you talked him into? Yes, I gathered as much. Well, I hope this one pans out. Back before Walter and I married, he confessed that he had stashed away a credit stick in a copy of Around the World in 80 Days. Somewhere between a rainy day fund and a slush fund, he said he'd always had a bit of extra money set aside in case opportunities arose. I can't really fault him. They're his credits. He can do as he likes. But over the years, it's become something of a joke between us. When he wants to take a chance on something, it's his way of asking without asking if it's all right with me. Frequent enough that it's a running joke. Not so frequent that he still has credits to his name. I'll draw up the appropriate paperwork for the funds. Thank you for bringing me his message. Hey, how's it going? You enjoying the resort? Yeah, this planet's pretty great, huh? There's a reason they named it after Paradise, right? Name's a million, by the way. I work for the resort. You can come to me if any of the other staff here gives you trouble. Anyway, unless you need something else, I should probably get back to what I was doing. Gotta solve all the resort's problems before I can enjoy the Paradiso nightlife, if you're picking up what I'm putting down. Well, I'm the shift manager, so I take care of my employees, so they can in turn take care of our guests. Got to make sure things run smoothly here, you know. I also used to run speed dating, but that's been put on hold. Wine tasting's still going strong for the all-inclusive guests, though. Of course, at night, I party like everyone else. Between you and me, this place is great for casual hookups, if you know what I mean. 
What are you hinting at? Is that an invitation? Cause I already have plans tonight, but we could still... <laughs> oh, you were just asking about like, in general. Uh, there is some talk about building a club, but that hasn't happened yet. So people tend to make their own nightlife. Me? I like to find that special someone and take him to the beach and just feel the cool ocean breeze while dancing on the sand to some chill music, you know? Uh, you must mean Jacotte. Sorry, yeah, I've tried to fire her several times over it, but her uncle's a Paradiso group board member. Between you and me, he's just as lazy, but he's determined to give his niece a job here, and it's about the bare minimum she can handle. I've tried explaining she's bad for business, but the sales numbers don't reflect that. It's the only shop on the island, so people still buy plenty. Anyway, I'll try talking to her again, for all the goods it will do. You know what? I definitely could. We just got a major recall on our air purifiers. And neither me or any of my staff are able to get off world to pick up the replacement parts. Bits of fiber from the filters can get blown out. Not only defeating the purpose of the purifiers in the first place, but they're also harmful if breathed in. Bad design all around, I'm told. But I guess this was an expense corporate cheaped out on. And we're stuck with it for the time being until we can afford to replace the whole units. They told us they won't ship them here since we're in unincorporated territory outside of the UC or Freestar Collective. Too much of a risk of pirates. Too much liability, they say. Funny, it's not a problem for other companies. Anyway, that's where we are. Wow, that'd be great. You can pick up the purifier parts using this claim slip at the Unified Transport Facility at Gagarin Landing. It's a long-term storage facility where the parts are being kept. Just show the claim to the shipping manager, Akachi Rosenblum, and you'll get what we need. Thanks. You're really saving my ass. Not much time to talk. Lots of cargo to sort through today. I'd like to help you, but there's a problem with my computer system. I can't verify your claim number at the moment. The technician said they should be done fixing it by 1100 hours local time. Look, Gagarin may be past its heyday, but we've still got a lot going on here. It's prime real estate for industrial ventures. Corporations will often contract with our secure warehouse facilities here to store merchandise. Some companies use it for older parts, like the ones you're picking up, so that they don't take up space they need in their own warehouses for merchandise that moves more quickly. Hmm. Normally I wouldn't allow it, but work is starting to back up. And I wasn't looking forward to staying late to finish processing all the claims. So, what the hell? Take a crack at it. This thing you're wearing? It's kind of creeping me out a little. You are just a wizard with tech. It's... well, impressive. How about that? I guess I can call off the technician. And thanks to you, I won't have to work extra to make up for the time. Here's your order. Thanks again for the help. Can't wait until we get those purifier parts. Hey, you got them? That's great! And just in time, too. One of my maintenance people said they heard something rattling around in one of the purifier units. Thanks. I'll make sure the staff here always treats you right. Be sure to experience all our resort has to offer. Huh. Well, this is unexpected. You really shouldn't have felt obligated to help. But the truth of the matter is, you've actually saved me a great deal of time and headaches, so I suppose I should give praise where praise is due? So, good. I should probably give you something for your trouble. Thank you. I guess? Hey, I uh, heard you did a great job handling the uh, situation with the colonists. Given your expertise, I wonder if you'd be willing to help with another delicate situation? Nothing really to report on that. They left and we haven't seen them since. It seemed to go smoothly. Oh, good. I was hoping you wouldn't mind. After you answered our earlier distress call, you seemed like the sort of person that could help me out. There's a guest 
Corbin Carpenter, a former wanted criminal from the Freestar Collective, actually, he's causing trouble. We could use some help dealing with him. Well, frankly, some of us are a little intimidated by the situation. We usually deal with drunks and vandals and the like, not hardened criminals. I've been doing this a while. I don't think this guy cares about his own life, if you catch what I'm saying. The resort would like to avoid any reports of security killing a guest in the hotel, even if the person involved is a criminal. It's bad for PR, I'm told. Well, it started with public drunkenness, then a noise complaint, and from there, things escalated. He picked fights, stole other guests' belongings, and now he's locked himself inside his room. Been there for at least a day past his checkout time, but he won't leave. Says he's got a gun. So you see what we're dealing with now. Great. We'd like to avoid a shootout if possible, but if it happens... Well, at least it won't look as bad for us if a vigilante takes him out. I'll give you a key to his room. Things have been quiet for a while now, so I'm hoping he doped himself up and passed out. This might be the opportunity you need to get the drop on him, talk to him, or subdue him before he can act. Good luck. Hey! Who the hell are you, and what are you doing in my room? You're with security, then. I'll tell you the same thing I told the other officers. Piss off. I'll do what I want and leave when I want. This here's a free planet. Uh, you better not be lying about if I listen to you. Take the easy way. Huh. Okay. This seems a little weird, but maybe you're telling the truth. Fine. I twisted my arm. I turned myself in. I apologize. Pay for the damages. Whatever stupid shit it takes for them not to send me back to prison, I'll do it. You tell them I'm here. Packing up to go. Hey, good job handling that without violence. Despite them almost begging for it. Opie's not too much trouble for you. Wow. You really did it. I mean, I shouldn't be surprised. Now, I just hope he keeps his word, but either way, you defuse the situation, and I think we can handle it from here. Thanks. I really owe you one. If I was rich, this whole business venture thing would be so much easier. Whoa. This is really happening. Okay, I, I just lost the ability to think for a moment there. Hang on, give me a second. Whoa, all right. That's really fantastic news. But we can't celebrate just yet. We're going to need at least one more solid investor. Oh, I'm sure he could fund most of the business in New Atlantis, if he doesn't already. That's not the point. If I put this all in the hands of a single investor, whoever that is suddenly has a lot of influence. If I have at least two investors to start, then one person isn't pulling all the strings, if any strings have to get pulled. Have I mentioned I'm not great with metaphors? So, having Walter backing us is fantastic, but I'd feel much better if there was a third party involved. If you know anyone, now's the time to call in a favor. Haha, <laughs> very clever. You are kidding, right? You do? I mean, are you really serious about this? Look, I would gladly take your credits if it means you and I can be partners on this, but I'm not trying to guilt you into it. So before you commit, I'm going to give you one last chance to back out, okay? Wow, wow, <laughs> this is so amazing. It's you and me. Well, and Walter, but I'm sure it'll all work out. I'm afraid there's not much in the moment I can do to really thank you for this, but I promise you it will pay off. I've got some people to talk to and a trip to Galbank in my future. Thank you again so much. I was hoping to run into you eventually. I've got something for you. While that's very sweet of you, I insist. You did me a huge favor, and I couldn't live with myself if I didn't get you back. 
I saved some of the credits I earned. I can't compare to what you did for me, but I wanted to show my appreciation all the same. Here you go. Oh, I'm just working the front desk at a local accounting practice. It's not glamorous, but it pays the bills while I take classes. I haven't decided whether I want to pursue a history degree or get into film studies. I've always been interested in Earth culture, so one of those seems appropriate. Oh, no problem. I wanted to keep my word. Anyway, I was hoping you could do one last favor for me. Since you have a ship, would you be able to deliver a letter to my sister Julia for me? I knew I could count on you. This means a lot to me. Let me just add a few more details to my letter. And... Okay, there. Thanks again. Take care. Personally, I think daylight's overrated. I get by just fine. Yes, you did. You know how I know? The rain cloud over your head is all but gone. Here, for your hard work. With a lady lock back on my side, I expect the business to be less bust and more boom. And let us never speak of those accursed boots ever again. People ask me why I'm so picky. I wonder why they're so willing to settle. And you made it back alive, which already puts you ahead of your predecessor. I trust you've brought my property with you. I did not. But it seems to have all worked out in the end. When you're in my position, it often does. Excellent. And as promised, here is your reward. And now, if you'll excuse me, I have business to attend to. We can pay to fix the damages, but, well... Some things are irreplaceable. Good to hear. I figured as much. See? I just finished looking over the final design they sent over before you arrived. I've got to say, it's certainly interesting. They managed to cram just about everything they could into it. Honestly, I don't think it ever occurred to me to do something like that. I'll be honest with you. This is the most expensive ship we've ever made. But I'm confident we can set a price point to make it work. Now I'd be happy to make it my new personal ship. Additionally, I want you to have one of the first off the assembly line for all of your hard work. Feel free to pick it up at the star yard. Thanks again. Back in the lab. Quiet, safe, secure. Just how I like it. Well, will you look at that? Huh. And it, it seems to be in working condition. So you see, even when tragedy strikes, there's people like you to help pick up the pieces. <sighs> it makes me feel good about where we're going as a species. Well, I hope so. <laughs> and with all the resources we have here, I have no excuse not to. Here, I know credits are a lazy gift, but as a scientist, I think it's better to be practical. Thanks again. All of our services are designed to minimize pain and maximize happiness. You found it. Oh my God, thank you so much. I, I don't know what to say. You have helped a humble businessman. You, you saved me and my business. I'm so grateful for that. Thank you so much. And, oh, I, I hope this hasn't tainted your perception of my wonderful facility. If you need any work done, I'll always be here. Your stories are a big hit. You lead a, well, an amazing life. I already interviewed an ex-pirate about the robbery. But she was as reliable as good coffee around here. So you were there when it went down? What were you doing there? Why do I get the feeling you're often in that situation? Tell me about this Captain Petrov. I've heard he's a bit of an eccentric. What was your impression of him? I would have loved to have seen it. I'm sure it would make a good story right there. 
No one seems to know exactly what was stolen, but everyone agrees it was valuable. Care to shed some light on it? Sure, right. Try again. What was stolen? <laughs> I don't blame you. Last question. About, and I'm quoting, a zoo gone wild. The other source swore up and down that alien creatures got out of their cages and went on a rampage. Please, please, please tell me she was telling the truth. It's got to be some aurora-induced hallucination. You mean besides the ratings? I just want to live in a galaxy where eccentric millionaires have out-of-control zoos. But, just give it to me straight. Zoo. Fact or fiction? Some days, it is worth it to get out of bed. I love it. This is just a plain old good story. Check the newsfeed for it later. And here's your payment. When you first walked into my office, I had no idea you would be at the center of so much. And I get the feeling you're not sharing everything. I might surprise you, but I understand. I talked with the editor, and he authorized a special bonus for someone who's worked with us so long. And maybe one day, years from now, you can fill me in on the stories you didn't want broadcast. Take care, Constellation. It can't be. You found me. I knew I made the right choice in letting you go. for the stellar introduction. Your success is unprecedented. Before you came, we were just discussing how continued use of force against you is unwise. We are not a monolithic people. The Starborn are individuals. Some are united in cause. Others are in it for themselves. We are all in it for ourselves. Some of us are just more honest. The 
emissary threatened your ship, demanded you hand over your artifact. How is that so different from what I did? We needed to warn you off. Every encounter with one of our kind could spell disaster. For whom, exactly? I say whoever can collect them should. And who gets to say that? You? Me? The Emissary? I have debated morality for near infinity. And all I have found are groups of people enforcing their will on others. Rules and laws spoken as principles, but backed by arms and violence. Enough. We have more to discuss. The Unity. You are on the path to it. It is a place, a gateway. It is where we were reborn. Not a relatively expendable Dusty anymore, are you? Look at where you've ended up. I'm not who you think I am. <laughs> this universe is only the first one you've been to. I've seen hundreds. Where I came from, I was the one who ran to the eye. I left you behind to protect the artifacts. And the hunter killed you. One of me, at least. I collected the remaining artifacts, and they opened the way to the center of my universe. And the doorway to an infinite number of others. That is the unity. When I stepped into it, I became a starborn. It's how I've entered other worlds, including yours. They are all connected. And that's the problem. All the artifacts are needed to complete the armillary and open the way to the unity. In every universe, the starborn fight over them. Innocent people die. You've witnessed the power granted by the temples. The anarchy that can be unleashed. Someone has to decide who should get them. Here it comes. The Emissary tells you only the worthy should enter heaven. You're twisting what I mean. They're hypocrites. They use the chaos caused by the hunt for the artifacts to establish an order where they decide who's worthy. I attacked your lodge because I wanted the artifacts, and you held me off. You got away. That wasn't some morality play. You didn't survive because of righteousness. You won because of persistence, luck, and skill. As I have done, countless times. I was also human once. But what does it matter who or what I was when eternity is within your grasp? It means I've seen thousands of universes, collected their artifacts, been to their temples, you have a small taste of their power, but it keeps going. Oh, say what you really mean. That if what you're seeing is true, that means anyone can act the way I do. See things how I see things. You say I can't be the same man as Aquilus. You're really just talking about yourself. The real monster lives within us all, doesn't it? You've never come this far. Not in all the universes I've seen. The path to the unity is opening to you. You're going to tip the scales one way or another. Better your hand be on one of our sides. You're already in it. With artifacts come Starborn searching for them. Fighting over them. I want a truce between all three of us. Give you some time to think over which approach to the unity is the one you want. Mine or the Hunter's? Yes. Let's see how willing you are to live under someone else's rules. 
Just remember, one of us isn't trying to judge you. Sure you have more questions? Ask. When all the artifacts are assembled, the device they create is called the Armillary. In many ways, it's a model of the multiverse itself. Through it, you can reach the Unity. And from there, you can become Starborn. You've seen the terror the Hunter causes. Every time a Starborn goes through the Unity, they get more artifacts, find more temples, gain more power. We can't let more like him abuse these gifts to destroy whatever's in their way. Different? I never know who you are when I meet a new version. But so much of you stays the same. It's hard. But each universe is precious in its own way. Mine will never have its original you in it again. As yours won't have its real me. It's not an easy experience to describe. But the Unity will speak to you. Offer you the chance to become Starborn. You will be leaving this universe behind to be reborn. Everything you were before will be gone. Maybe that's why it offers the choice. Compassion? Or is it testing us? You might think the Emissary is on your side. But your persistence is what forced them to tell you the truth. Remember that. They enter the Unity, take artifacts from others, employ force, all the things I do. I am many things, but I would never tell anyone what to do with their gifts. That is your decision, not someone else's. The Emissary wants to become the judge of who gets to enter, but the Unity itself doesn't judge. To see what would happen, of course. You might not understand just how many times I've done this. Usually, you're the one who ends up dead, and whoever cries over your body goes on to become the Emissary. Sometimes I manage to get you all bunched up and take care of the problem in one go. Sometimes the Emissary has gotten to me first, and I never arrive. Hundreds and hundreds of variations of me through Constellation, and it's almost never you. You making it to your ship on your own, that's new. I took it as a sign. I don't get many of those anymore. <laughs> no, we always end up having this meeting at this time. But it's the usual affair. Can we make peace? No. Oh, how tragic. Honestly, I was beginning to wonder why I kept tending. And it's bad habit I started a long time ago. Perhaps I just like meeting the emissary to gloat. <laughs> but you have provided something quite new to talk about. Maybe you're a random die roll. Or maybe the Unity is finally responding to all my hard work. I've simply found that it's the quickest way. Talking, forming alliances, waiting for the right moment to commit theft. It's all so tiresome. I'll admit you getting away has been the most interesting thing to happen in quite some time. As soon as I realized what had happened, I knew I needed to wait until this meeting with the Emissary to decide what to do about you. Whoever created the artifacts and built those temples is playing a game with us. One whose prize is access to the center of all creation. There are no rules. Whoever gets all the pieces wins, and I've won, over and over. I don't kill for the Unity. I find the easiest pathway to it. Before you leave, I want to give you something. 
A way to another artifact, but also a lesson in how dangerous they can be. Seek the moon of old Earth. There are secrets there you must discover for yourself. Here, to open the way. Yes, I will say no more. And I am sorry we have not always been forthcoming. I hope you will see what I have seen. You should also talk to your colleagues in Constellation. I am sure that they have gathered more information on the remaining artifacts in the fringes of space. Part of me wonders what they will all say about what you have learned. But I will leave that to you. Hey, I've been talking with the others, and I'd like to get everyone together to say goodbye. You know, to bear it. Thank you. It wouldn't be the same without you there. I'll have everything set up in a few days. Mateo told us about your pilgrim's voyage. You found it, didn't you? The meaning of unity. Wait, say that again? Multiple universes? You can't possibly mean what I think you mean. Let's take a step back. This is everything we've been building towards, and the implications are... a lot to take in. Could you explain the part about multiple universes one more time for everyone? Yes, I wouldn't mind a little more detail. And that's why the Starborn want the artifacts so desperately. They're the keys to unlocking the infinite. I don't even want to think about the physiological changes you'd need to travel between universes. Plus what it would do to the mind? Enlightenment? Or oblivion? Like the hunter? You have the opportunity to reach the closest thing to your god that might exist. And you're second-guessing it? One doesn't approach the afterlife without some trepidation. You're right. We have to see the unity for ourselves. I know this has been a lot for everyone to take in, but we finally have answers. Let's make the best of them. Uh, not to make a sharp turn in a grand tale, but I got the eye fixed up. Bruised, but still blinking. Let me know when you're ready to follow up on what it's seen. These last glimpses from the eye are from the farthest fringes of known space could be the only remaining pieces outside the hands of the Stargon. Aye. The Blackest Sea seems less of a concern when there are sharks leaping out at you. Catch a smile out there. You should have research station. You speaking. What is your business here? We are a research station run by the Hadron Consortium. Our work is proprietary and confidential. Great minds advancing basic research for the future of humanity. A bunch of scientists who pool their grant funding. Constellation? The Explorers? That's a new one. Uh, one moment. We don't usually take visitors, but the Director's willing to make an exception. For security? I'm going to have to ask your friend to wait out there. What's inside? Stay with me and don't make any sudden moves. I'll get the door. Welcome to Nishina. Just be careful. Cora's grown rather attached to you. She might not be alone. Attention all. I am declaring a Gordia. All sections are now on lockdown. Senior staff, protocol Delta. Use up. There. Be right with you. Ethan Hughes, Chief of Security. If you'll follow me, I'll show you to the Director. We're a small research station in the middle of nowhere. Pirates eat places like these for lunch. It is my job to make sure that we are not on the menu. Kaya Patel, our Administrator and Research Director. 28 years in quantum particle physics, or so I'm told. It's beyond me. Here, you can see our lovely storage area. Don't touch anything. 
So are Nishina. What the? Easy, easy. What the hell was that? What are you talking about? One minute, you're following me, and then you're just gone. Minute later, you pop in out of nowhere, looking like you were in the middle of a fight. Kataxi? That doesn't make any sense. They're a native species, but we haven't seen any in years. I should have never let you inside. What is this? Some kind of stealth tick? Who are you working for? <sighs> Look. I don't know what's going on. Let's get you to the director. Maybe she can figure this out. Oh, oh, thank God. Finally, someone came. The distress signal. You picked up the distress signal, right? Yeah, yeah, I know. I wouldn't have made it much longer. It's been so long. I'm out of food, out of water. But I made it. I... Wait. How did you get in here? What? What are you talking about? No. No, no, no. This doesn't make any sense. Unless... The accident. Maybe... Maybe this is a side effect of the accident. If the probe is still feeding power to the distortion, then... Three months ago, I was calibrating an experiment in our high-energy research lab. There was an accident. An explosion. It caused a gas leak. Sparked a fire. I was trapped in the control room. There was nothing I could do. They're... They're all dead. An artifact? You mean... The metallic god? Disappear! We should... Wait. He's back. All right. We're on our way up. He was out. I was just filling in the director. Let's keep moving. If anything happens, the director's office is on the second floor, end of the hall. You can't miss it. Come in. Kaya Patel, research director. And this is our chief scientist, Maria Hughes. Ethan said you disappeared right in front of him. Twice now? Three times? Director, you can't be taking this seriously. Look, I don't know who you are or what you're doing here, but there has to be a rational explanation for all of this. An artifact? You mean the source of the distortion? No, we don't. Enlighten us. Really? That's all you're gonna say? No, no. Fair enough. You have a prior connection with them, then. Maybe that's why this is only affecting you. So far, no one else has reported anything unusual. Either it's your prior exposure to these artifacts, or, perhaps, simply the fact that you're an outsider here. We didn't know. That's why we were researching it. That is science, after all. That is quite a claim. What makes you think that? Tell us about this other universe. Raphael? Raphael died in the accident. He... Wait. Burned out? The leak. Director, there was a hydrogen leak right after the accident. It was contained in a minute or two. But if it hadn't been, it could well have caused an explosion. Another universe, though. That's a lot to swallow. We're not sure. Raphael was in the lab near the ventilation controls. He could have stopped it. Maybe he did. Or died trying. You mean this other Raphael? No. How could we possibly do that? 
Raphael was a colleague and a friend. If there was some way to help him, I would. But it does seem unlikely. Presumed dead. The research level has been locked down since the accident. We still don't know exactly what happened. If he survived, he could have ended the lockdown, but... This facility and the research level two kilometers beneath us were built to study a gravitational distortion. This artifact and the field it creates. Three months ago, our chief engineer, Raphael, was calibrating an experimental probe when something went wrong. We still don't know what happened. There was a series of explosions, and somehow, it's still running. That's all we know. Whatever happened, we're completely cut off from the research level. Data feed, network, physical access, everything. That would make sense. That's why the field strength keeps increasing. We have a control unit for the probe. After the accident, I tried to use it to shut down the system, but the kill switch isn't responding. We could shut it off manually, but the entire research level is locked down. We can't even get down there. Not from up here. The explosion fried the network circuits. Without physical access to the research level, there is little we can do. We have been working in makeshift labs for months. What you see here are just our living quarters. Most of this facility is deep underground. We have a particle accelerator and extensive research and development labs. Or we did. How? I told you the research level's locked down. We can't even use the damn elevator. What? Clever. In this other universe, Raphael survived. He made it back from the lab. So clearly his elevator works. Take it. And you might be able to shut down the experiment. This is crazy. But first, we have to do something about your shifting. Maria, do any of the other controls still work? Could we adjust the particle sampling rate or the beam voltage? You can't be serious. We have no idea what we're doing. This thing is already tampering with space-time. If this gets any worse... It may also get worse if we do nothing. Right now, this seems to be our only path forward. <sighs> All right. It's worth a try. Then it sounds like we have a plan. Oh. Oh. It's you. What happened? You disappeared, and the ceiling caved in, and... and... <sighs> I thought I'd finally lost it. I'll manage. Look, can we just go? What? How? Look, if you think things are bad up here, the research level is even worse. I barely made it out, and that was months ago. I don't understand any of this. If I hadn't seen you disappear with my own eyes, I wouldn't have believed it. I... <sighs> okay, okay. You're my ticket out of here. We'll do this your way. We can get out through the pantry. Here's the key. I'll back you up, I guess. Look at this. It's going to take hours to clear this out. Assuming the rest of the building doesn't come down on top of us. I was in the lab, working on the frequency calibration for the probe. I was walking out of the control room when it happened. I heard the tanks rupture. The alarm sound. <laughs> I only had a second to react. I jumped back into the control room. The door sealed. I was safe. From the gas, the fire, everything. But I was trapped. There was nothing I could do to stop it. If I had gone the other way, maybe I could have made it to the ventilation controls. Killed the system. Even if it killed me. I don't know. I don't want to think about it. They're a native species. We had an electric pulse field to keep them out. The fire took out the generators, damaged the foundation. They just keep coming. I'm not sure. It might stop whatever's happening to you. It's a reasonable theory, I guess. How should I know? 
You're the one who keeps winking in and out of existence. I just want to get out of here. Go do whatever you're going to do. I'll see if I can clear a path to the door. What? I... Oh, it's you. You realize you just popped into my locked office. So much for security protocols. What a day, huh? <laughs> yeah, let me get the doors for you. And done. Is there anything else you need? That's right. Has been since the accident. We can't connect to the control system to override it. The whole system's on a head trigger. Cameras spot anyone not in the staff database. They fire off an alarm and all hell breaks loose. Bigger than you'd expect. We've got a particle accelerator, whole lab complex, the high energy research lab. Real state of the art. Can't tell you what a tenth of it actually does. I don't know much personally. Like I said, we haven't seen any around here in years. The original survey team ran across them. You're welcome to read the old logs if you want. Yeah, I'll unlock the terminal for you. The Kataxi in the other universe. Aha. Uh -huh. Wow. I've got an experimental thing one of the engineers put together. But... Uh, you might be right. All right. Yeah. It's never been field tested. But all yours. What, did you get lost in the hallway? Uh, all right. This is the probe control unit. Most of these controls aren't responding. I'm going to very carefully adjust the settings I can. There's no way to tell what's about to happen. <sighs> Pay attention and be ready for anything. I'll begin by adjusting the energy feed of the electron beam array. We're at 93 teravolts. Calibrating to 95, 97, 100. Ugh. Nothing. Let's try the other way. 91, 89. What the? Okay, okay. It looks safe to approach. But what in the world? It's a micro distortion. Flux pattern matches the distortion in the lab. The setting is just exposing it somehow. Step into the distortion, please. It's possible. That's what I want to test. If that is what's happening, what does that mean? How many of these distortions are there? All around us, all this time, and we've never noticed. I don't know. <sighs> Nothing. No, hold on. There's a slight pattern change some kind of resonance. All right, stay there. Let me turn the feedback up for a moment. Calibrating to 90, 91. What happened? Are you all right? So the lower setting causes the distortions to manifest and the higher causes you to shift. That seems promising. <laughs> Keep it on the lower setting until you want to shift and you should be able to avoid any more accidents. I'd give you my control unit, but it looks like you already have one from the other universe. Love to take a look at that when this is all over. I... no. No, we still don't understand what we're dealing with here. If we found something that works, let's not press our luck. You may want to practice shifting just to make sure this works reliably. Closer to the distortion, conditions may be less stable, if that's possible. Right. If you can get down to the research level, you need to make your way to the high energy research lab. Disengage the power interlocks, then pull the emergency shutdown to stop the probe. That should finally put an end to all this. Oh, and before you go, the director wanted to speak with you. It really is just down the hall. Well then, all set? If you need supplies, I've asked Dr. Barakova to take care of you. It's the least I can do after everything we've put you through. Before you go, there is 
one other thing we should discuss. If this experiment is the cause of your shifting, when you shut it down, the shifting will stop. What happens then? To you and to us. Exactly. And when you shut down the experiment, the probability function will collapse. You are the outside observer in the system. Whichever reality you are in, at that moment, is what will become real. For you and your universe, at least. The question is, which will you choose? Of course. I don't know. I'm not sure it's possible to know. It may cease to exist. It was one possible universe, but not what actually happened. We or Raphael actually did die months ago. Or it may remain real, just not in your universe. Or in some quantum sense, perhaps you make both choices and both outcomes will be real. Welcome to quantum mechanics. Nothing will change. Nothing can change. If the universe was other than it was, you would not be here to make this choice. What you choose will be what happened in your universe, the universe that brought you to this point. Hmm. If this were a choice between my life and Raphael's, I would ask you to save him. But as the director of the station, I am responsible for the lives of my staff. 30 people. People with families, careers, futures ahead of them. In this universe. Not that I can see. Have you reached a decision? It's not an easy decision, but I am grateful. Thank you. Now, it's time you are going. With the network offline, we can't shut down the security system on the research level, so you can expect some resistance. Be careful. Ethan, unlock the elevator lobby, please. Ma'am, research level is still locked down. I'm aware of that. I... All right. Done. Good luck, dear. It's been a fascinating day. Tatiana Barakova, station's doctor. This is not a public medical facility, but the director has ordered me to assist you nonetheless. I can spare a few med packs. Beyond that, I am not your therapist, your psychologist, or your cosmetologist. If there's anything else you need, ask. Excuse me? Perhaps you'd care to try a dead-end medical post on some godforsaken planet in the middle of nowhere, huh? Six-year surgical residency, and I spend my days treating paper cuts and hurt feelings for a bunch of mathematicians and physicists. And now I have to deal with some spacer who thinks they're jumping between universes? Spare me. Director, he's coming around. Careful, dear. Slowly. How are you feeling? We do seem to have two of him, yes. When the lockdown ended, we found you both out cold on the floor of the lab. And then we found our Raphael. I still can't believe it. To me, you've all been dead for months. And then, just see this, it's a lot. It's really a lot. We don't know. Raphael was the linchpin in all of this. He was the only one present at the time of the accident. His actions, the point of divergence. Perhaps whatever you did set up enough of a resonance to shift him through. This is impossible. But so is everything else that's happened here. What? No, no. There's nothing left for me there. This... This is a miracle. In the end, I suppose it did. 
we're never going to be able to publish this. You're free to go. And to take the artifact. I think it is abundantly clear how little we still understand about it. For saving Raphael and our research facilities, I'd like to offer you compensation to the full extent of my authority. And as for me, I've decided to take a leave of absence. After everything that's happened here, I need some time to think this over. But you ever need an engineer, just say the word. I owe you everything. Thank you. This has been a truly remarkable experience. So we know the answer. Who are the Starborn? Well, we are. We're some cracked mirror version of ourselves. The whole thing seems unreal. Yeah. Who's keeping track? You know, yeah, plus one for Team Sam. I was hoping the Starborn were somehow so advanced that their concerns were... Cosmic? Significant? Instead, they're fighting over goddamn toys like we've been doing since caveman times. It's just a stupid game to them. And all their deaths and suffering, not relevant. God, I hope it is. So the Unity is a gateway. A gateway to countless possibilities. And you have a chance to go through it. Imagine. I'd be lying if it doesn't sound like the adventure of a lifetime. I don't know if you're taking anyone with you, but if you take me, I got no idea if I'd go through or not. If it went for Cora, I'd jump on it in a heartbeat. Cora would probably shove both of us out of the way and dive in first. Born explorer, that girl. Exactly, right? I know it's your decision who to work with, but you gotta remember that the hunter murdered our friend. Sure, the Emissary may be a version of Barrett, but he's not our Barrett. But that doesn't make what the Hunter did right, not by a long shot. If the Starborn are party crashers from different universes, I'd side with the one that's not willing to murder innocents to win. Me neither. My head is still spinning. Maybe after a few nights sleep it'll be clearer. Take care. I was just thinking of all the knowledge we can share between us and the other Earth survivors. Oh my gosh, really? I didn't know if I'd ever hear from her again. Well, let's see what she has to say. Oh, that's wonderful! I'm so happy for her. I'll have to find a way to go see her sometime. Thank you so much for coming all this way to deliver it. Thank you so much for bringing that to me. I can't say it enough. It was wonderful hearing from her again. No, I'm happy here. I still feel a sense of duty towards the other colonists, or whatever were considered nowadays. Knowing how miserable she was with our situation, yes. Some part of me wishes she toughed it out and got used to it, but I know that never would have worked. This was the right decision for her, and I'm glad you were able to help her. While I still can't leave, I'm hopeful she'll come visit me. I'm sure we'll continue to send messages back and forth so we can stay in touch. Well, I was worried about her. None of us have ever left our people before for obvious reasons. But hearing that she's safe and happy makes me glad for her.